Okay. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you to thank you for all this information that you download in us through different uh, scriptures from the book, from the scriptures, from different teachers that you set for this time to instruct the body of Messiah. And Father, we are gathered here to study and learn more about what is coming and what we can do in these times. As um, in uh, the book of Daniel, it's saying that the those who know you uh, will be strong and be able to do exploits in this yeah. last time. So Father, we, we trust that uh, you are going to uh, finish the work that you have started in us mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to be a light to our families, to our friends, oh, yeah. to our neighbors, that they will see the light and, and get saved before the end is coming. We thank oh, yeah. you. Mm -hmm. We thank you and we praise you in Yahusha's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Yusana. Um, are you able to see what I have before the screen? Yes, I do. Exactly. And little did you know, Sister Yusana, that we were talking about you. You actually, the one that came out of your mouth, this verse earlier, not too long ago. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and even with this brother Shem, you know, has shared what he has been, um, you know, the, the lessons you taught this Shabbat. And had you been in our Shabbat this past Shabbat? I believe that um, we are all really unbeknownst to us. We are connected. Uh, we are in one mind, one spirit. And there is a common message that is coming forth and that is to a, a, a message of preparation for what's coming mm -hmm. Amen. and and please forgive me brother if if because you are not as loud i may not hear you right away but perhaps just um i will try to be sensitive to uh give you the opportunity to share your thoughts um and same with you sister yusana sister rita dad mom mm -hmm. right so I bring this before us, and before we read the scripture here, because what I want to start off with is just um, poke at our curiosity a little bit further as to what Yahusha means when he said this when he was here on earth, right? And um, also, I'm hoping to end with Second Thessalonians. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very That's interesting. I like this picture because it talks about this anti mystery and mystery indeed. Because, brother and sister, for, I know you have studied the scripture for many years, and Sister Rita as well. And you know that there's um, a lot of, you know, uh, um, commentaries and speculations when it comes to Second Thessalonians this anti, this mystery, this restrainer. Yeah. And so this is kind of where I'm hoping to tie. Um, but we first start off with um, Matthew 16, 25, and really similarly to John 12, 25. But before we read this, can I ask a very, I, 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 I want to ask, start off with a question tonight. And the question is, um, how are you hearing? Yahuwah's voice more and more clearly. <laughs> you want us to answer or is rhetorical? Um, I guess both. If if Yahuwah puts uh, something in your heart that you want to encourage the, the body with, brother, go ahead. But I guess I just want to add to that question. Have we um, learned more and more to be still? Re despite of what we are seeing, the the what seems to be a reality in this world, are we have we, or do we know how to enter into that secret place where we quiet everything that's going on around us, and we become still, 
And as a result of that um, practice, that Yahuwah's voice is becoming more and more clearer than ever before. And in expectation. <laughs> you know, C.S. Lewis says, Yahuwah whispers to us when when things are when things are in, when we are going nicely quietly, we hear this nice, soft, quiet mm -hmm. voice from Yahuwah directing us. Yes. That's why we're walking straight. But when we are going off the course, he shouts. Hmm. He shouts to us in our pain because he wants us not to suffer the pain. So he's shouting and we are so drowned out by the other noises. Even though he's shouting, we still are not hearing. Hmm. Hmm. That's something C.S. Lewis wrote almost 100 years ago. Very, wow. very cool thing. Wow. And if and that's a really good point you make, brother. And and if we are, and we should be now, because there's this is the this is the time for us to uh be very sensitive to Yahuwah's voice and the Ruach's leading. I wonder what he's you know telling us. What are the things that he is teaching us? And is part of what Yahuwah is impressing in us, could that be tied along to what Yahusha has said when he was here on earth? And now this goes back to the greatest contradiction that I have before us. Let's talk a little bit about this greatest contradiction. Um, so Sister Rita, Sister Yusana, did you want to read what the verse is before us? For whosoever will save his life, shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it that's matthew 16 25 mm -hmm. and john 12 25 says he that loves his life shall lose it and he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal <laughs> now do you mm -hmm. do you kind of see why it is dubbed as the greatest contradiction yeah and and also in um, in revelation it says it says that we should not love our life unto death hmm ah, that's the one you were quoting ah right yeah consistent and um mm -hmm. so if we really listen to what yahusha is saying right he's really saying that he is calling us not to love this world. In fact, mm -hmm. we are called to hate this world. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, the the principles of this world. Exactly. It, it wants us to love the people, but not, not what it, it's being promoted in this this world. Exactly. The spirit of this world. And that's because the people are made in his image. <laughs> after his likeness mm -hmm. and then yahusha says um you know my kingdom is not of this world to pilot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i guess now before us we have we are um and i'm going to use the word <laughs> that's i think overused as well in these days in we're facing unprecedented times unprecedented yeah. that in a in a way that you know, it's no longer something that is to be, you know, in the near future. It's actually already here in a sense. Things that yeah. we have prepared for or dreaded, things that the scripture has spoken of, brother or sisters, right? And I guess what I want us to, you know, understand a little bit before we, before I take you to where I see in the scripture what, you know, Yahusha means by, you know, not for those who love their life shall lose it. And those who um, will, you know, those who will lose his life for my sake shall find it. But really, if you think about it, we are still dealing right now with the duality of life, right? And if you think about it, there's really two paths to life, right? There's abundance and lack. And historically, this has always been the case 
you know, the, the cycle of nations, you know, the, the process to, to, you know, to get them to the state of abundance. And then when that happens, there's a process involved when people get lazy and um, immoral, and then it goes down to that um, lack, to that um, cycle of, of the opposite of abundance, right? There's really only growth and cleansing, open and close, light and darkness, right? And in, in biology, in the way Yahuwah has designed us, this is also very true. And we don't really think much of it because we, we think of these things only in times that we are pressed, like especially in times that we live in now. Now that everyone is forced into this um, ice, uh, quarantine, it gives us the opportunity to reflect, right? But why is it that we don't think much of it? Because just like our bodies, we have what's called an autonomic nervous system. It's called autonomic or automatic because it doesn't take for us to have to think about this. This just automatically turns on or it turns off. And so in our system, we have, we are either in rest and digest, fight or flight. And what happens is this has even been proven in a Petri dish. A cellular biologist has studied two Petri dishes and in one Petri dish, um, you know, they put the cell in a solution where there is nutrients. And in that case, the, the cells open themselves up. They like that. They grow, right? And then the mm -hmm. other, in the other Petri dish, the solution that's in there where the cells are swimming in, the, the, the cellular biologist introduces toxins in it. And right away, the cells will actually close itself. So in one Petri dish, it opens, it's open, and the other one, it closes. Why? Because the other one, it's growing. The other one, it's protecting itself. So we are the same way. We are either rest, digest, healing, or we are fight or flighting or freezing. So... See what we and and usually what happens is that when we are not experiencing troubled times, right? This is how we are. We go into a state of growth, and then we it leads us to abundance. And up until this point, do you find that we have been abundant? We have been living abundantly in general, right? Mm -hmm. And in times of now, we're starting to see trouble creep in. Now what the comparative comparing it to how the autonomic nervous system the body is now designed when the body perceives that there is trouble or a famine the body goes into a state of um cleansing and how that's done is um you know there's a process involved in chemicals uh, or things that are activated inside our bodies to allow for that to happen so, so what I'm saying is um, we have to be open to the idea that the, that cleansing is upon us, <laughs> that Yahuwah is now coming to cleanse. Do you mm -hmm. see that? Amen. Amen. The fall of communism, I was so clean. When in the communism, not having what to eat, I was so clean. <laughs> I'm wow. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Sister... You know, in times of famine, what you're saying, I, I, I think I'm, I'm hoping I'm hearing you right, because again, you're kind of, the volume is low for some reason. Um, but it, when you had a lack of food, your body actually goes through a state of regeneration and cleansing. So I'm using that analogy to, to for us to, to really be open to the fact that Yahuwah is now allowing for lessons and learning for us to experience in these times ahead and really to make us more patient than ever before, I'm right? Sure. See, we are, um, when we are in rest and digest, we are open to growing. We're supposed to be, because um, we're designed to learn to love and love to learn. 
Yeah, we, Yahuwah is love and we are from him. So that makes us love. So the, the very reason for us, for us to exist here on earth is really to learn how to love. And, and do you know that the brain loves to fondle with, with knowledge, with information, the brain loves that. And then what happens is during times of judgment or when we experience trials, guess what happens? The brain shuts off because it conserves all the energy and, you know, it, it's not the brain. Think about it. When you're in trouble or when you are um, under a lot of stress, do you find that your brain is, the, you know, you're experiencing hardship in learning? Brain fog. Right. But then Yahuwah still, when this is happening, he is now leading us. To, towards righteousness. See, that's the, that's the opposite, right? So when we are experiencing times of judgment and experiencing trials, we are on the path of learning righteousness. And how that happens is righteousness comes forth from within us because, it, you know, we are made in Yahuwah's image. So within us, we are designed to be bearers of his image. But what got in the way is the abundance sometimes that we have become fat in our hearts, right? <laughs> wow. Do you right? Mind if I share something with you? Please. All right. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. And Moshe is going to warn Israel of exactly what you're saying. Wow. Well, Betty, listen to what he says here. And Deuteronomy chapter 8, I will read from verse 6 to 10. Observe the commands of Yahuwah your Elohim, walking in his ways and revering him. For Yahuwah your Elohim is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of waters, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranate, olive, honey, and a land with, where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks and irons you can dig cup out of the hills, but when you are eaten and are satisfied, mm. praise Yahuwah Yahalehim for the good land he has given you. But be careful you do not forget Yahuwah Yahalehim and failing to observe his command and his laws and his decrees that I am giving you to stay. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied and when you find you settle down, when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become hard and proud. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Wow. Isn't that so mm -hmm. true? Brother, That what you just read just now, we actually, as a, a rich man, read over to us on Shabbat, just so you know. <laughs> Again, the wow. connections, right? And yes. Again, I like that this is where this is what encourages me because this is how I know that we are in one spirit. You know, when mm -hmm. things, you know, tie together and there's this beautiful tapestry that's being sewn before us. And oh, yeah. and even Sister Yusana, you shared in one of your um posting, I, I can't remember which channel now, social media, but you encouraged us to um to to uh ponder. Isaiah 26. And I did that. And this is mm -hmm. actually, a, a, this is a result. What I'm presenting before you is a result of my meditating from that word and tying with the ones that Yahuwah has shown me prior to and after. It's amazing. So the question mm -hmm. I have here is what is our purpose in times of tribulation? Isaiah 26, 9 says that for when your judgments or right rulings are in the earth, Right? The inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Amen. So we are now on that path and that should excite us. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, there, we, there is this duality that we have to understand. Or, or I know we get it, but we have to see that the duality affects what I just said there. Because righteous, Yahuwah's people will learn righteousness, but the wicked does not. But like, like Isaiah 26, 10 says, let, let grace be shown to the wicked, right? So even though this is the, you know, Yahuwah is still graceful 
His merciful, His mercy is new every day. And I believe that we are entering this time where Yahuwah is going to open eyes and He's going to open ears. Hallelujah. Right? And again, this is a post fall. This word duality that I've been using several times now, if you were to read Proverbs 10, just in your own time, read it. It's very clear there. Proverbs 10, the, the word duality is clear. And so for every good, there is evil, right? And here's, the, the, here's what science in the quantum realm is talking about when it comes to this duality thing. They're saying that for every matter, there is an antimatter. For every matter, there is an antimatter. And if I could just ask you to remember that, because I'm going to tie that a little later on. But when it comes to um, what is upon us now, the judgment that seems to be here now, I, I want us to just zero in on four things that Yahuwah requires of us and the wicked as well. But if you look at these four things, there, there is a differentiation by nature when it comes to the polarity of it. Or what do I mean by that? So two of these things, as you can see, remembrance and weight, it applies to both the righteous and the wicked. But one doesn't remember and the other one does. The one waits and the other one doesn't. So that's what I mean by difference in polarity. But the last two things I have there, because I've got remembrance, weight, restrainer, and judgment, right? Restrainer and judgment, it seems that it is common. There's no polarity difference to both the righteous and the wicked. And I, I will try to explain what I mean by that. So remember Yahusha, or no, Paul. Paul says something that... Um, you know, was this Paul? Yeah, Paul says this, right? Second Thessalonians. He says, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Mm -hmm. Hmm. So there's this, and, and I just want you to, to remember that question because, um, you know, perhaps when, when the way, the more we see the events that will unfold before us, because I think it's going to unfold fairly quickly. Brother Shammai, I know you are in agreement with that. This is, we're no longer talking about months. We're talking about days, weeks. weeks. So I want us to remember what Paul says. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? And we're going to unpack a little bit of what he means by that. But again, what are the four things that Yahuwah requires of the righteous and the wicked. We start off with the remembrance. <clears throat> so if you remember, if you look at the word remembrance, you, you see there, return or return to your member, right? So re, return to what? R remembrance means recollecting, being reminded, <clears throat> right? So yes. what are we waiting for? <laughs> Oops, let me just, I, my throat is dry. <clears throat> Isaiah 26, 8, 9. <clears throat> we kind of touched based on this last couple of sessions already, right? We've been saying, let's wait for Yahuwah. <clears throat> and then so Isaiah 26, 8 says, oh, Yahuwah, we have waited for you. And the prophet says, the desire of our soul is for your name, that's true, right? It's true for me, and yes. for the remembrance of you. Wow. So we have forgotten? Look at the desire of our soul is for us to remember you. So what is our soul wanting to remember? Could it be? It has to do with Jeremiah 1.5, right? Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. We talked about this in the past. I had a relationship with you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I set you apart. Hmm. So we have somehow forgotten 
what our relationship was like with Yahuwah before we entered this earth realm. And could that be the reason why Yahuwah is saying, you know what, if you wait for me and you allow, you know, the, to, you, when you delight in my instructions, right, I will grant you, let me grant you the desire of your heart. And what is that desire? Is for Yahuwah's name and for us to remember him. Whoa. Proverbs 10 says, 10, 7 says the memory of the righteous is blessed, right? But the name of the wicked will rot. So the righteous longs the remembrance of Yahuwah, but somehow the wicked seems to be the opposite, right? So what is the soul and spirit needing so badly, right? And I, I, I hope I put in the, I, I didn't put the reference in the scripture, but I found this in the scripture somewhere. I think it's in Psalms. Or, or with my soul, I have desired you in the night. I think it's in Proverbs. Yes, Proverbs. but my spirit within me, I will seek you early. Yeah. You see that? Even when we are asleep, <laughs> when we think we are not conscious, our spirit is very, very conscious. In fact, our spirit is so happy. And so it is the prime time for Yahuwah to, to minister to our spirit because our soulish thinking, our soulish mind has ceased, has been put to rest. So we hear the Yahuwah's Ruach very clearly as we sleep at night, right? Psalm 37, 7, we know this, be still before Yahuwah and wait patiently for him. And then it says, why are we waiting, right? Because Yahuwah will wait, will fight for you. And all we have to do is be still. You see that? Exodus 14, 4, 14, right? And again, what are we waiting for? Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Hmm. See, we have to wait for Yahuwah because he will allow us the remembrance of him. And Isaiah 26, 10, this is an interesting, again, Sister Yasana, you shared this for me to reflect a couple of days ago. I can't even remember when. It says, come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. Wow. We are, um, I don't know about you, but when I, a long time ago, when I used to advocate, ad, I used to be a pre-trib rapture believer. Hmm. <laughs> this is something that I heard Chuck Missler vouch for, this particular verse. This was my favorite verse, you know, and... If you are a pre-trib rapture, you right away, your mind brings you to the remembrance of how you understand this verse, how it was presented to you. And that is that you will physically enter a, some kind of chamber, right? And you will physically get protection. So my question to you is, do you think that this is talking about protection from our flesh? And that's probably a rhetorical question. But mm -hmm. all you have to do is look. All you really need to do is look at that word chamber. Enter your chambers. Chamber in Hebrew is cheder or cheder or keder. And it means chamber, room, parlor, innermost or inward part. And mm -hmm. You know, from the root word shadar, it means to encompass, be surrounded, be enclosed. But interesting to me how it's talking. Now, if you look at this and let's use the word inward part or innermost. Come, my people, enter your innermost or inward part. Hmm. I don't know. I just. So why do why did that catch my attention? Because we know that we are made of body, soul, spirit. And Paul says in Romans that we know that in our flesh, there is a law of sin that is within our members. Right? And we talked, we started off by saying 
Yahusha's primary message is anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And Paul continues, the New Testament keeps talking about dying to self. You know, are, are we being, uh, is it, is it, is it about being suicidal here? I think well, there's more to it, right? So I bring that before you because like Brother Sham had mentioned earlier about what's coming, what's being installed, what's being made ready while everyone is tucked away, quarantined in their homes, while the government has imposed a lot of really scary laws to keep us to oblige, to, to be in compliance with what's coming. Um, and, and you know, I, I, I don't know if you've heard this, but probably from Matthew Nolan, you heard him say that Wuhan, you know, was one of the first cities that actually uh, turned on this 5G technology. And this is what's happened to them. So right. the point is, um, and, and I heard from other sources as well, that some of the the outbreaks in pockets of you know that in the world in north america that is a result of them testing 5g so it's like they turn it on for a bit to see the effects and then they turn it off yeah. so right so so again this is the 5g thing is not new this has been around for at least 10 years i guess the magnitude of it is going to be implemented very soon but we have to understand for under for us to really understand why this is such a um, something for us to really understand why this is dangerous for us you this 5g is made up of what's called millimeter wave technology so if you understand what millimeter wave technology is let me try to paint a picture for you so in our brain, right, we have what's called neurons in our brain. Ma majority of our brain is made up of 80 billion neurons. 20 billion neurons are at the, the you know, at our neocortex or the, the largest part of our brain. And 80 or 60 billion neurons makes up the, the hind brain or the, the, the little brain. Now, for you to understand what millimeter is, you know, one tip, the tip of a pin, mm -hmm. you can fit up to 30 to 60,000 neurons in a tip of a pin. That is the size of a millimeter. So again, neurons are the size of a portion of a millimeter. Mm -hmm. So neurons are a size of a portion of a millimeter. And how that is, it's about 30 to 60,000 neurons that can fit at a tip of a pin. So okay. how do I, as best as I can explain this, 5G environment is not fit for humans to live in, in very no. simple terms. It's like you taking fish and moving you into out of the water and expecting the fish to live outside of the water. Mm -hmm. That is that is the kind, and I don't mean for us. I don't. I'm not fear mongering. I am preparing us to understand what I'm about to present in a bit, right? But I just want you to see why this is wreaking havoc, and you know the outbreaks, the pandemic, all of these things are is a result of only a slight test of this thing, a slight test. So now that's in one hand. On the other hand, we have to ask the question, why are we constantly being bombarded by technology? That to, you know, technology has blanketed our lifestyle with electronics, everything in our food, water, heavy metals. And like brother says, brother Sham was saying earlier, there's nanoparticles that's in the air that we've already breathed in, right? So, now I bring this before you, and I know Brother Shem might have some um, interesting things to add to or maybe redirect, because this just came to me when I was putting this together. Now, according to Daniel, right, there is a fourth kingdom coming that will smash and crush all previous empires, just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. 
So this vision that he describes of the feet and toes of this vision of Nebuchadnezzar, right? That vision of feet and toes is mixed with iron and clay, right? So Daniel 2.43 says, this mixture of iron and clay shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage, but they will not hold together just as iron and clay do not mix. So what am I saying? I'm saying that um, there is an attempt because we are bombarded, we are blanketed with um, heavy metals, with electronics, with technology, with now with this 5G environment. Could it be that they are trying to put in the, inside us, trying to make a mix, iron and clay mix. And a part of that is because they're trying to form an alliance, a soldier, right? Could it be the attempt of the kingdom of darkness to form something like yeah. that, right? And so remember, and, and they're so sinister and they know this, remember um, Lucifer or, a Satan, he is, we have to give him a little credit. He is pretty crafty. And yeah. he knows the word more than I think a lot of people of people do. Uh, he knows the prophet. He knows, and he's been around thousands of years. But could it be that he's using this flesh that we have <clears throat> that is carbon, that <clears throat> is basically made up of carbon? And remember, we talked about it last time. Carbon atom has six electrons, six protons, and six neutrons. And go to Revelation, you will see there, it'll say, this is the number of man, 666. Six, six. Now, going back to iron mixing with clay. Okay, so clay, I want you to think of carbon, right? Flesh. Now, iron is the second most element on the earth. Remember that the tabernacle? So the tabernacle, it was constructed and there's three metals, right? Gold, silver, and bronze. Just, I just want you to remember that for a second. But, you know, iron is a form of metal, isn't it? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if we are being, why is it that they are so um, adamant about putting heavy metals in the air, in the water, in the food, and ultimately in our bodies? So now, remember, our bodies is like the, the, the scripture says, likens it to a tabernacle, right? And we know that there are the gold, silver, and bronze. Now, if you look at, I just want to specifically go into the silver part. Silver is found outside of the tabernacle. Like silver sockets, etc. So inside the holy place and holy of holies, there's no silver found there. It's only gold. Correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, Brother Sham. Yeah? Yeah, right. yeah. So again, silver is only found outside of the tabernacle. So, <laughs> and we know in Revelation, and this just came to me, unfortunately, I don't have the reference right now, but somewhere in Revelation, it says, you know, only, I want you to measure only the holy place and the holy of holies, because it has been given to the, it's been like the outer court has been given over to the Gentiles, something like that, right? And so what I'm trying to say is this, if we are likened to tabernacle and, you know, we have the outer court, the holy place and the holy of holies that can be analogous to our flesh, which is the silver, which is outside, which is the outer court. And then the holy place and the holy holies could be likened to our soul and spirit. So what am I trying to point to you i don't know if you have pieced together what i'm trying to present but this ties back it. this ties back to what yahusha says there is <laughs> there is this life that uh we he's not interested you know whoever will save this life shall lose it and whoever will lose this life for my sake shall find it so the question is are you are we am i in love to this flesh? Am I in love with this flesh that I have? <laughs> Am I in love with the things of this world? Do I hold a lure or do I hold 
you know, a delight in, in into the things of this world. And and as Sister Yusina and Sister Rita pointed out uh, very well earlier on, you know, we are to love the people of Yahuwah because that's the things of, you know, from him. But I'm talking about the ways, the principles of this world, right? Are, is Yahuwah calling us now more and more, that voice um, telling us more and more to love not the things of this world? So, so remember, we talked about um, four things Yahuwah requires of the righteous and the wicked, right? We talked about remembrance, right? Um, we are instructed to remember because like I, uh, like Jeremiah says, we had a relationship with Yahuwah that we have forgotten. And we seem to be, we're going to be blessed with uh, remembrance of Yahuwah. But we are dealing with this flesh thing that we have right now that we have to learn. We have to understand it seems to be, um, has no part in the kingdom. This is what I'm trying to say. Clear so far? Yep. Okay. So now I go to the second part, which is the weight. Okay. So, and, and just quickly before um, going back a little bit to remembrance. Remember I said there's duality in remembrance. So there are people who will understand that this is not, will really understand that this is not Yahuwah's kingdom. But there are people as well that is really attached to the things of this world. And the scripture calls them the wicked, right? So now we go to weight, duality again. There is an aspect of duality when it comes to waiting. So um, maybe a couple of days ago, I can't even remember. I, I don't really lose, I lose track of time these days. But I proposed um, in the WhatsApp group, in the chat group, for us to consider Zephaniah 389. Yeah, I remember I was, that. <laughs> I was wondering if anyone was in the same Ruach or someone was seeing what I was seeing as well. But now I'm going to try to tie in what I was seeing into the wait part, which is Yahuwah is requiring of us is to wait, right? Now, in Zephaniah 3, 8, 9, it says, therefore, wait for me, says Yahuwah. So what are we waiting for? He right. continues and he says, until the day I rise up for plunder. So in some translation, it'll say my determination is or, or mishpat or judgment or right ruling. You see that? Mm -hmm. What are we yeah. waiting for is the gathering for judgment. So mm -hmm. Yahuwah's determination or his right ruling is to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms, or in some translations, it says to gather the nations and the reign of kingdoms. In other words, everyone is being gathered here. Am I, am I seeing that right or wrong? Yahuwah. Yes, you seen it very right. And it's, it's, it's corroborated in Revelation and in Ezekiel when he said that he will invite the vultures to come in and feast on the flesh of kings. There so they go. will gather them. He will gather them. Right. Past judgment. Exactly what Zephaniah is saying. So, do you, so do you are in agreement. Thank you, brother. You're seeing that there is this gathering of everyone, right? Now, if you look at the word influenza, that comes from the word influence or yeah. influentia or visitation. I think I mm -hmm. talked about that last Tuesday or last yeah. Wednesday. But mm -hmm. the reason for the gathering is this. There will be a pouring out of Yahuwah's indignation. And what that looks like is all of his fierce anger will be poured out. And it says all the earth, there's no exception. All the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So, yeah. <laughs> so now going hmm. back a little bit to what I was saying earlier. If we, Yahuwah has an invitation. He says, come my people, enter thou into thy chamber. So that innermost, that inner part of us, right? And 
<laughs> all the earth and the things of this world will be devoured. So now, and I also talked about earlier how we are made up of body, soul, spirit, right? So could it be that that invitation in Isaiah 26 for protection is speaking of our inner man and not necessarily this flesh and blood that we have? Could it Very be? Much. Right? And then Isaiah, Zephaniah continues and he says, after the earth is devoured by the fire of my jealousy. And, and park a little bit. Why does Yahuwah say my jealousy? And you have to ask, oh, I mean, I have beautiful skin. Like, what's wrong with my body kind of thing, right? Um, we, have to, we have to admit that at some point in our life that we have all participated in worshiping and in um, idol worshiping, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So, so now do you see why Yahuwah is jealous? Yes. And, and then Paul says there's a law of sin in our members. So in other words, there really has to have a fire that's coming to, again, we talked about it earlier, to cleanse the earth. And if, if we have been, um, uh, if we have been uh, experienced or we have something that's unpure in our flesh, then when Yahuwah cleanses, he will cleanse. You can guarantee he will cleanse us into purity, right? Yes. And, and then that's why I see, for then I will restore to the peoples a pure language. <laughs> that they may call on the name of Yahuwah, you see, to serve him in oneness, in one spirit. Right? Oh, man. Right? Wow. And this is, I guess this goes back to what I'm saying. Do you love life? Are we, you know, when you listen to Matthew Nolan, he is a, so funny. I find him so funny. You know what he's doing? He's really, brother, I don't know if you discern this, but he I'm is, watching him. Sorry. He is calling for, um, he is calling for an army. Don't you think that he's getting people fired up? Do you see that? Yes. I see that he is really causing, um, I, I, the, I can't think of a word right now, but a revolution, I think. I don't know. But, but the, the thing that we still have to understand is, could some of us, this could be our call, is my question. We have, we have to come to terms that this could be our call, is to yeah. what... Um, you know, even as I say that, I, I hesitate because even my body is not agreeing with what I'm saying. Do I want to, am I ready to die for Yahuwah? And in my spirit, I am, but my body is a little, this yeah, fleshly yeah. body that I have. <laughs> Who will save me from this, um, you know, this body of death? Yahusha will, right? Mm -hmm. So remember 5G. Remember everything heavy metals. and you have you heard of skynet yes. global wi-fi is what is going to come before us it probably is already here so if we have wi-fi in our homes that is already causing um health issues whether we realize it or not they are looking to install a global wi-fi it's called skynet mm -hmm. so all of these things could it be designed to keep us to keep us brother and sisters stuck in our carbon flesh vessels is yes. my point could it be the enemy's um push to keep us not to to be in this carbon flesh and change the image of the creator into something that is mixed with iron and clay aka nephilim mm -hmm. and ultimately wouldn't they want that so that they can enslave mankind Oh, you are touching a subject that I could talk for six hours, but I don't want to interrupt. <laughs> right? And I, I'm trying to get us to be like ready and not fall in love with this flesh that we have. Because could it be that this is the 666 that it's talking about in Revelation? Now, here's the thing. Do you know that electronics are made up of raw material, materials that are basically metals? Yes. So nickel... 
and 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 part of that is silver okay silver so remember i talked about it earlier that the, the tabernacle the the silver items are only found outside not inside in the inner man it's only found in the in the outer court which we know is a is a representative of the flesh why because all the animal slaughtering all of the taking off and putting on you know the cleansing all of it is happening in the outer court right yes. and and we know that in the outer court you know it is it is it represents the earth really because um in the outer court you know the the people that are mm -hmm. operating in the outer court is still dependent on the sun so without yeah. the sun they can't see but what i'm saying is when yes Susan, yes i want you to listen to this this is vitally important to what you're saying yes please brother because we and i say we i mean the human that has disregarded the laws of yahweh yes. and don't want it in our lives and we have made other gods and idols Listen to what he, he said to the kingdom of Yehuda um, in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 44, um, verse 26 and 27. 26. Jeremiah? I have one Jeremiah 44, verse 26. 44, 26. I have sworn by my great name, says Yahuwah that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Yehuda in all the land of Egypt. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. Wow. And all the men of the land of Egypt shall be consumed and distorted by the famine until there be an end to them. So hmm. the first thing he will do is take his name out of their mouth. Wow, <laughs> yes. So today, when you look at what's happening, that name, is the offense that name is what the the antichrist the, the whatever you want to call them people they don't want to hear that name that's why the masorets and all those um forgive me for being blunt but you know matthew is blunt too so i'm blunt like that for him. i mean these are the jews that we um concocted these words adonai and hashem and all this thing and they say they're doing this out of respect it's not out of respect. Yahuwah took his name out of, they cannot use it. Hmm. There you go. He is a... Have to accept his son, Yahusha, and then he will put his name back in your mouth. Pure. Pure. No, pure. Hallelujah. Yeah. What an off, awesome day that would be. <laughs> right? And, and, and just... So we kind of tie things as well. Remember I was saying outer court is dependent on the sun, right? But when these priests or the high priest go into the into the the holy place, there's no windows there, right? There's no dependence on the sun at all. Only the menorah, the 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 glory of Yahuwah that's being emitted from the holy of holies. You know, these are all um, outside of the sun's, um, you know, ability to shine. So in other words, in Revelation, brother uh, Shem, remember it says, in that place, in the kingdom, there will be no more sun, right? Almost, yeah, but he will be the light. Yahoo, yes, exactly. Yeah, Yahuwah and the Lamb will be the light. So, yeah. so I guess what I'm saying is this, we have to... I'm trying to get us to understand that there is this crossover that we all have to come to terms with. There is a crossover of life here on earth and eternal life with Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And when that kingdom will come down here one day, right? So, mm -hmm. so we've talked about the, the reality or what seems to be what faces all of us, which is this flesh that we have to deal with right and we have to um we understand that we have to remember remember all of these things is to help us remember who we were before we, you know that relationship that we had with the father right yeah. so yeah. and for us to you know 
and I, you know, for us to, we are here on earth to learn how to love again, in a sense. So anyway, remember the CME that I talked about, because now I want to, to start to further this a little bit. Remember the CME, the yes. coronal mass ejection that I talked about last Wednesday. So again, yes. what it is, it's a solar or it's a coming from the sun phenomenon and billions of tons of particles is emitted by the sun into space that reaches the earth within three days, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that these particles um, does not harm humans on earth, but here's the but, they can affect electronic systems, okay? Just like what I was saying, everything we are really bombarded with electronics, okay? So why did I bring that earlier? Because I want to bring clarity because I don't know if I was clear as to how I was connecting that, but I was likening that to Yahuwah's pouring out of his indignation, his fierce anger, like what Zephaniah was talking about, and that all the earth is being devoured by this fire, by this, this, this thing that's being emitted by the sun, right? So there is, you know, it's like a maybe a type uh you know, for Yahuwah, for us to understand what he's doing, right? And this is what I meant by the COVID-19 virus, right? Um, another clarification that I want to put in. Could it be a mocking of the kingdoms of this world with their fist raised up high to the most high saying, we have started implementing our plans, blah, blah, to mix iron with clay. Do you think that this is what the kingdom of this world is doing by yes. introducing this COVID-19 because they are like, you know, they are putting their fist up to the most high and saying, ha ha, we've started it. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so now this judgment, this right ruling is upon all of us. But Yahuwah has to purify, right? See, Zephaniah is, God, Zephaniah is saying that Yahuwah is gathering both the righteous and the wicked, right? And even in Zephaniah 2.1, it says, gather yourselves together. Yes, gather together, O undesirable nation. That's what Yahuwah says in Zephaniah 2.1, right? Zephaniah 3.18 says, I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly. Wow who are among you, to whom its reproach is a burden. Do you see that Yahuwah is gathering both the righteous and the wicked all at the same time? Yes, yes. Zephaniah yes, 320, yes. World government. Keep on the goat. Yeah, yes, brother. This is the separation of the sheep and the goat. There you go, yes. But then here's what Yahuwah says, Zephaniah 320, at that time, I will bring you back. Wow. You see, remember what I, I was saying earlier? He wants us to remember him, to bring remembrance of Yahuwah. I will bring you back to what? What it was like before. Garden of Eden. Even at the time I gather you, for I will give you fame and praise. Wow. So Yahuwah is righteous in her midst. He does no unrighteousness. That's what Zephaniah 3, 5 says. Morning by morning, he brings his right ruling or his judgment to light again coronal mass ejection morning by morning has been being uh, emitted and the scientists have only come across it in 1859 the very first time they actually detected this but it's been around for a while now right so you can see that this is something that has been going on morning by morning Yahuwah's right ruling is being brought forth to light. Okay, so now let's talk about silver real quick. Um, silver is rarely found alone, but mostly in ores, which also contain lead, copper, gold, and other metals, which may be commercially valuable. But silver emerges as a byproduct of processing these metals. So remember we talked about... Um, Silver, how this is in the outer court. Yeah. Okay. So if I can just, um, I want to read something from a book I was reading. It's called The Emotion Code. This is a wonderful book. But let's talk about, because remember, what we're talking about is Yahuwah's 
right ruling his judgment upon us, all of us. And he is in process of really refining us through his fire, right? So if I can read this real quick story, and I just want you to appreciate this because it's so encouraging. <clears throat> so there was once a group of women studying the book of Malachi in the Old Testament. As they were studying chapter three, they came across verse three, which says, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. This verse puzzled the women and they wondered what this statement meant about the character and the nature of Yahuwah. One of the women offered to find out about the process of refining silver and get back to the group at their next Bible study. So that week, this woman called up a silversmith and made an appointment to watch him at work. She didn't mention anything about the reason for her interest beyond her curiosity about the process of refining silver. As she watched the silversmith, he held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up. He explained that in refining silver, one needed to hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flames were hottest as to burn away all the impurities that I just described earlier, right? So the woman thought about Yahuwah holding us in such a hot spot. Then she thought again about the verse that he sits as a refiner and a purifier of silver. So she asked the silversmith if it was true that he had to sit there in front of the fire the whole time the silver was being refined. The man answered yes and explained that he not only had to sit there holding the silver, but he had to keep his eyes on the silver the entire time it was in the fire. If the silver was left even a moment too long in the flames, it would be damaged. So the woman was silent oh. for a moment. Then she asked the silversmith, how do you know when the silver is fully refined? He smiled at her and answered, oh, that's easy. When I see my image in it. Oh. And then here, if today you are feeling the heat of this world's fire, just remember that Yahuwah has his eye on you and he will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Oh, wow. You encouraged by that? Yes. So we have to understand that even though we are, you know, we seem to be entering this time of phase, this phase of time where we are going to go in the fire. Just like Sister Yusana, you were mentioning earlier, the three friends of Daniel. Right? He, they had a great attitude. What was that, Sister Yusana? What was their attitude? You remember? They say that the, our God is able to save us from you, O King. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow our knee to you, O King. Wow. So, Hallelujah. Yeah. And uh, they got this from um, Isaiah, right? Mm -hmm. From the book of Isaiah, when it said, when you pass through the water, will not overflow you when you pass through the fire, will not hurt you. Wow. So they had that, that verse ingrained in their heart, and they were confident, you know, and they, they believed the word of Yahuwah. Well, and after we just, what we just read about that refining silver, aren't you confident now? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> you know, I learned that the, the reason why Yahuwah uses these um, imagery and typology and because... As humans, we learn by associations, you know. This is proven by neuroscience. This is the best way for us to understand, mm. to learn something new, is for us to be able to um, tie it to something that's pre-existing inside us already. Otherwise, we won't be able to understand. And this is what I'm, I was trying to do, trying to help us understand these things by association. And this is why I bring the coronal mass ejection and you know what? Um, I just realized that I, I, I was I, the order of my notes is a little bit off. 
we have looked at remembrance, weight, and judgment. And now we're going to be doing the restrainer. But I, I think Brother Shem wanted to um, share his thoughts. No, no, no. Go on, because um, I have too much to say. Uh, I want <laughs> we will try. We will no. give you the opportunity, Brother Shem. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Brother. And, and so now, remember, we started off um, the imagery, the picture I showed you earlier on. It says, what is that? Who is that restrainer? What is that restrainer? that Second yeah. Thessalonians is talking about, right? So again, I'm going to try to use the same word, uh, the same uh, methodology of learning, and that is through um, the law of association, okay? So I briefly, briefly touched on uh, what I called neutrinos from our last discussion, remember? Yeah. Yeah. I can forward you this, this video by this physicist. Uh, it's like 10 minutes. Uh, Laura Lee Cormos, but she explains this very well, and she goes into application as to why neutrinos is something that we really should at least take a moment to appreciate, okay? So if you look at the word neutrinos, I just want you to see the word new, right, is there, new, and try is there, and mm -hmm. if you look at the word trinos or train, training, well, anyway, it just, I remember, I like to play with words. But before I'm going to try to explain neutrinos a little bit, and then I'll forward you this video for you to see it for yourself. But again, remember we talked about the, the we live in a world of duality. And physicists understand now that there is what you call for every matter. As, and remember, we're all made up of matter, right? We are made up of matter. Everything that we see in this universe, in this world, is made up of matter, including ourselves. But physicists have been able to track something down that tells them that for every matter, there is an antimatter. So universe is made up of molecules. Molecules are made up of atoms or atom. <laughs> atom, atoms made up are made up of electrons. Electrons is not made up of anything smaller. It just is. This is the end of the line. And so now if you look at Hebrews 11.3, Hebrews 11.3 says that, um, what does it say, 11.3, that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahuwah, so that the things which are seen were not made of things that are visible. You see? So when I start to talk about molecules, you, we don't really see that visibly. And even for further, you know, if I talk about subatomic structures and electrons is it, okay? So the nucleus, okay, so if you look at an electron, if you look at an atom, if you can look at the picture on your left-hand side, this is really what an atom kind of looks like. So the, the blue part is the electrons, right? And in the middle of the electron is called the nucleus. And that nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons, right? Remember I talked about earlier the carbon? Carbon has uh, six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons, just the way the structure is. Okay, so now the nucleus, these are made up of even smaller particles called quarks. And so the quarks are just like electrons because that's the end of the line, basically. Okay, so the electrons, that's it. And then the nucleus is made up of quarks, which is, there's, it can't get any smaller than that. So if you look at, if you compare a nucleus, so if you look at this little structure in the middle of this picture, right? Imagine a single P, right? So this P-size nucleus, it's surrounded by electrons that are flying around, and it's about a half a kilometer away if you look at it from a sub, you know, the sub -stru subcellular structure or subatomic structures. So if you look at the nucleus as the size of the P, right, and half a kilometer away are electrons flying all around it. In between 
the electrons in the nucleus is basically empty space. So if you look at this picture in between here, and it's try, you know, I, I try to the pink part of it, it's it's like a vacuum, right? Mm -hmm. So the P or the nucleus has an electric charge, and the electrons that surrounds it also has a charge. And the interaction between them creates an electromagnetic form. And in a nutshell, in a nutshell, that's the reason why we this universe is 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 in existence, basically. That's what, you know, if you look at what Paul is saying in Hebrews, he says, everything, this world, the worlds were framed by the word of Yahuwah. Things that are seen, that the things were which are seen were not made of things which are visible. You see? Right? So again, what I'm trying to explain is this this subatomic structure that I just explained is the reason why we exist, basically. But I want to go further a little bit because that's not an in, that's not a complete statement, actually. I talked about neutrinos, remember? Mm -hmm. If you do a Google search about neutrinos, this is what physicists would call ghost particles. Oh. And <laughs> it is super abundant in the universe. And in fact, we are constantly flooded with something that you we, we don't see. And this is called a neutrino. It's again produced in the sun. And I think it has something to do with the coronal mass ejection as well. I think they are related. So now, if for us to comprehend what I mean, how super abundant neutrinos are, if you were to look at your thumbnail right now, just by looking at it right now, there has just been billions of neutrino that just went through your thumb. And if you were to quantify that, there'll be enough neutrinos to pay the global debt 10 million times over, and you'd still have enough to do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm that rich. <laughs> that rich. That's how much neutrinos that goes through us, okay? Now, the thing that, what's different about the neutrinos, because remember, elect, the, the P or the nucleus and the electrons have charges, right? They have electrical charges that makes them interact and creates an electromagnetic form, right? The neutrino is actually neutral. It does not have any charge, right? So it just basically goes through. So neutrinos, so in other words, because it doesn't have any charge, it doesn't really interact with um, the, the, uh, the, the matters or the, the, the atoms that we are all made up of, right? So neutrinos are not made up of anything smaller, okay? It doesn't have an electric charge, like I said. And it is extremely short type, um, what do you call it? It's not that it doesn't have an electric charge. It has an extremely short range type of charge is what uh, actually the physicist clarifies by saying. In other words, it is so undetectable. The charge is so short range that it's considered weak in a sense to be even to be detected. Okay. So the earth is intangible to a neutrino. So it, like I said, the neutrino doesn't really affect us because it doesn't have a charge. So it's not confined inside the atom. They're very introverts, which makes it very hard to get to know them. That's what the words of this physicist were saying. This neutrino is an introvert. It doesn't say anything much. It doesn't say much. So now I want you to remember John 16, 13. Who does that remind you of, this neutrino? John 16, 13 says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority. You see? Mm. <laughs> So here's, I want to go back to about the matter and antimatter, and I'll tie the neutrino here. Do you know that matter and antimatter, actually, if they, um, the reaction between them is destructive. Matter and antimatter, they actually destroy each other. So this reaction, according to, and I have the articles to show you where I got this from, 
The reaction between matter and antimatter involves an asymmetric decay. In other words, it is destructive in nature. Do you see, uh, or uh, the way we understand it, what does darkness have anything to do with light, in other words? It cannot be together, is my point. So matter and antimatter will destroy each other. That's just how they interact. And for us to understand, you know, Hollywood has actually tried to make a movie to help us understand this. There's a movie called, um, oh my goodness, I can't remember now, something to do with angels. Um, I'll try to remember the movie and I'll forward it to you. But there's this movie that Hollywood tried to depict that basically explain matter and antimatter. Okay. Now, remember I said they're the way they interact, they should be destroying each other. But do you know the reason why they don't destroy each other? It is because of this neutrino. <laughs> the neutrinos that go through us in billions and in, you know, every second is what's keeping us from blowing up the universe, including ourselves. And this little picture that I have here, I took a, a picture of, of what's on the YouTube video, but she's basically saying um, the neutrinos, for, for the neutrinos to interact with the nucleus, it happens extremely rarely. This is why they dug up four kil two kilometers deep in Sudbury, Ontario, to study neutrino. You know, because when this picture that I'm showing you right now is one of the best um, computerized depiction of what an interaction with a neutrino would look like. In mm -hmm. other words, if in that rare time that a neutrino would actually interact with a nucleus, it would spark like this. You see that? It would yes. spark. Yeah. So again, we are, you know, this, you know, what got me interested when I, when she said that is ultimately we're going to come back to our original um, made up, makeup, which is light beings, right? Could it be that as a rarity of Yahuwah, he set apart his remnant, that the Ruach would interact with us and we would light up like this? You see that? And I believe that that's already happening in you know, in the unseen. And all I'm saying here, it just helps us understand using science that the scripture is, is actually not just a bunch of, you know, um, inexplainable things or mystery. We can demystify the scripture using science. Do, do you see where I'm coming from? So remember, so what I'm trying to say is we live in a world in a fallen world where there is antimatter and matter, right? In by design, antimatter and matter is not supposed to be, it cannot interact. It's going to destroy each other. But because of neutrinos and science, the scientist community has has studied and uncovered this. This is, and they're saying that this is the reason why we are still alive today. Get it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now look at the, so I'm basically using the law of association to get us to understand a little bit about the Ruach HaKodesh. So did you know that neutrinos is known to have three type of flavors? And this is what's going to blow, it blew my mind. <laughs> and it changes unpredictably as it moves from the universe to the earth. They have found, like, in other words, when they detect neutrino, let's say as an electron, Somewhere down the line, it can change into a tau or a muon. Like, it's unpredictable. It just does whatever it wants. But the three types of flavor of neutrinos is what you see in front of your uh, screen. It's electron, muon, and tau. Mm -hmm. Brother Shang, why do you think the science communities like to use these words that you can tie to the scripture somehow? Because... It is a designer behind everything. <laughs> Praise your <Yahuwah. laughs> and, and they don't even realize they're being moved right. by the right. by the creator for us to, to for us to gain understanding in a lot of these things. So look at the electron for a second. Look at the word L. Uh -huh. Look at the word elect is there. 
And that word, the etymology of electron comes from a Phoenician word meaning shining. Wow, light. Hallelujah. Muon, look at Muon now. Whoa. This is a little tough. I had to go into Japanese and Chinese. But anyway, <laughs> I just see Muon as mem, water. No? Yes. And in Japanese, look at this, it means mutual, nothing, yes or no. Isn't that reflective of the Ruach? Yeah. Right? Neutral. And look at it in, in, in Chinese, mu means admire, desire. Wow. So now you learned uh, a new word in Chinese and Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> so the third one, oh, come on. Now it's ta. ta. How do you say that, Brother Shem? Ta or ta? Ta. 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 Wow. Look at that. Why is there a ta neutrino? And in ancient times, Ta was used as a symbol for life or resurrection. I know Brother Sham Kent is itching to say more. Or Ta is a in Paleo is a type of mark or sign. Yeah. Oh, not on the stage. Oh, well, come on, come on. So what am I what am I trying to say here, basically? That remember I said the restrainer? Yes. Second Thessalonians says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our master Yahusha Hamashiach and our gathering together to him, we ask you. Oh, let me just actually, I think the reason why I put that there, because I wanted to read from it. Second Thessalonians. Okay. Yeah, we have all Bibles. We can read. Okay, brother, go ahead. Um, if you can please you? read. I was on the screen. Uh, Second Seven? Yes, uh, yes, brother. In the, where it says gathering. Oh. Uh, oh, Second Thessalonians two. Sorry, two. There we yeah. go. One. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Messiah, by our gathering sorry. together unto him, that you not be soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor as a letter from us, hmm. as that day of Messiah is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that mm. they shall not come, except they come fallen away first. Mm. And that man of sin be revealed, son of perdition. Wow. Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, mm. or that is what, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Wow. You want me to go farther? Please, until verse 6, brother. Okay. Remember or verse not, 7, sorry, verse 7. Or 8. Well, I had to verse 8. <laughs> I told you these things, and now you know. What mm -hmm. which all that, and he that which hold, uh, um, will be revealed in his time. And now you know what will hold that, and that he might be revealed in his time. Mm -hmm. It's very important that we make that connection there. For mm -hmm. the mystery of liquid did that already work. Mm -hmm. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then that wicked one will be revealed, whom Yahuwah will consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. Remember the question that we're all trying to understand here. What is, who is the restrainer? What is the restraining? Okay. Oh. And here in verse 7, it says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but only until he who restrains will do so, until he who restrains is taken out, right? So remember what I was saying earlier. The, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So in other words, matter versus anti-matter is already at work, and it has been after, since after the fall, right? Yes. So now do we wonder why the universe is actually in place? And even though, you know, there's the CME that's being given off by the sun three times per day, right? That seems to be tolerable for humans, except technology and electronics, okay? And, and could it be that this mystery of, of um, what do you call it, lawlessness is referring to this matter and antimatter that is really 
destructive in nature when they interact. But the reason why we haven't destroyed each other yet is because of the restrainer. You see, do you see my point? And the restrainer is this neutrino. Do you get it? So by the removal of this restrainer, it's like, it's like you see this uh, referee? Yeah. So matter versus antimatter. And the, the restrainer or the, the neutrinos is the reason why they haven't destroyed each other yet. Do you see my point, what I'm trying to say? And the culmination of the seed war is now being, we're, we're, I think we're being ushered in to see it before our eyes. So now, when the scripture says, you know, when the restrainer is, there seems to be this revealing, right, of the lawless one, and there will be, um, you know, Yahuwah himself will consume with the breath of his mouth, and we know that's fire, and destroy this with the brightness of his coming, right? So my point is, could the restrainer be, at one point, be removed, and Yahuwah yeah. will allow for this to, for this war that has already been declared from the Garden of Eden to actually have to take place. It has to take place. Why? And including us in it. And this is where I conclude. Because when he tested me, we will come forth as gold. Job 23.10. But when, when the restrainer is removed, this whole thing will be allowed, this, this war, right? But those who are following Yahuwah's ways stayed on Yahuwah's path and did not turn to the left or to the right, we will come out as pure as gold. I hope that you are encouraged. I'm encouraged in mixed emotions because who really in our, you know, it, we, we have to, do you see where I'm coming from? It is, if we're honest, are we ready to give? Are we so ready to even um, not love this life, to lose it, right, so that we may find life. Here we go. So this is what I mean by the greatest contradiction. How, how do we find the hope of glory from this? Okay, brother, go ahead, Brother Sham. Uh, you have said a mouthful, <laughs> and there's so many things there, like 10 different uh, trajectories you could go with all of this crazy but one of the one of the things that really um as, as you know I, I i am waiting with bated breath to see how you are going with all these teachings because in the in the trajectory you are going you are right on schedule to to come smack dab into what's going to happen in 10 days from now wow because we are we are heading for um, uncharted territory where mankind is concerned, but not where, of course, where the spiritual realm is concerned. Mm. The, the, the release of the watchers mm. that began in the, in the industrial age around 1900, that was an incremental, incremental release. There were not a whole bunch of them that got released at the same time. Mm -hmm. But this year, 2020, is when 200 of them are coming out. Wow. The watchers. Wow. And that's why all this technology of, of running all this Wi-Fi and 5G and all that, this, we are, we are about, two years or three years behind the real time, you know. They, mm -hmm. they really, if we would check things properly because of the Gregorian people messing with the calendar, mm -hmm. this should be the year 2023 or something. Hmm. So that's why we are thinking that um, we are behind because we are seeing 2020 on our calendar. Mm -hmm. But their program 
as, as Tom Horn and those guys will tell you, they, they have a, a 10 and a 20 year program and they are ahead of schedule. The, the forces of evil yeah. and wickedness of men combined. Mm. So these release watchers has now, we are now starting to see the result of it, but they have been working for three years now, minimum, if you listen to Mike Lake and Tom Horn and Steve Quayle, they will tell you they have been going at least three to four years now. What we are seeing with 5G and this virus stuff has all been done and prepared two, three years ago mm. to be used on, on, on the unsuspecting public. Mm. But the time for that being the son of perdition that Paul talked about in 2 Thessalonians 2, there has to be a certain condition existing on the earth for this guy to move in, mm. the son of perdition. And we got to read the scriptures cyclically. Mm. When we read 2 Thessalonians, you've got to read Revelation 9 because it's talking about the same God. Mm. And you talk, read Revelation 17. They, they're all going like this. <laughs> and it's talking about the son of perdition. Mm. And he is going to come out from the bottomless pit and he'll be let out. And we know CERN has been drilling now the, the, the hydrogen collider thing. Mm -hmm. And they have already admitted that they have made contact. Hmm. No doubt. Something. Right? So, but they're keeping all this hush hush to the public is being totally um, dumbed down. And right now they are using us as guinea pigs to bring their agenda. Mm. And by the end of this month, the world as we know it is not going to be the same. Something dramatic mm. is going to happen. I don't want to sound like a doomsday prophet. Yes. But I'm telling you, there's something dramatic going to happen on the, by the end of this month. Mm. I don't know if you recall, but in November or October last year, I had a message and I said after December 31st, the world is going to change. You did say that. Yes, I do recall that. Now you see, it's everything is happening. It's coming. So we are going to enter into a, a phase where we're going to have to, you know, we are going to be in such a place, even worse. Uh, the, the apostles didn't have to face a watcher. Mm -hmm. That's right. Paul and Peter, they never had to face watchers. We have to face watchers. That's right. We are now in a battle that they never had to fight. That's right. So most of we have to be more equipped. And I have been saying over and over over the last few maybe months, I've been saying this, that mm -hmm. we have to do the retrospection. We have to see where we are. We have to do an inventory because only they that know their God will do great exploit, says Daniel. That's right. right. That's right. And um, but if you go back into Daniel, what you were, you were alluding to just now in Daniel 2.43, yes. about the and, and the iron, there's something there that we are reading over mm. and we are not um, pontificating it clear enough. I want to do it for you right now. Yes, go ahead. Now listen to what he's saying. I will start from 41 so you could hear this. Daniel 4? Daniel 2, 41. Daniel 2, verse 41. Yes. Whereas thou seest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it no strength of the iron, for as much as you saw iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of feet were part of iron or part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the part I want you to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Verse 43 says, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with my clay, now pay attention to what's coming up. Mm -hmm. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So they couldn't be men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. It's vital that you see these beings that they're talking about, the ten toes and stuff, they will not be men. They, but they will mingle their seed 
Mm -hmm. They will want to mingle with the seed of man. Yes. And that is what the watchers were doing in Noah's day. Hmm. When they mingle the seed and they produce the Nephilim, right? Yes. But listen, listen to what Daniel says here. And whereas thou sawest Aaron mixed with her, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of man, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Mm -hmm. So this time, Yahuwah is not going to allow the total, like Nephilims, they're not going to be walking the earth like they did in the days of Noah. Because he's going to stop that, and that's what's going to happen with the son of perdition guy. Mm. When he is come, he's going to be, if you look at Revelation 9, he's coming out of the bottomless pit. Wow. Because that's when they're going to release him. He <laughs> hasn't been released yet, but his release is, is imminent. Hmm. And wow. he's coming out of that place, and we are going to have to contend with these powerful watcher beings that are going to be. Um, we, uh, mm. I should say, unleashed upon an unsuspecting human race. Wow, mm. wow. And they will, they will be trying to force a mixture, as you know right now, the, you know about AI and you know about artificial intelligence and robotics and, and yes. all that stuff. Yes. But those things, as though they could, they have so, so many smart AIs and hive mind and blockchain and you know all these things. Yes. But the important thing that these they are not they cannot come up with something yet that could be like the Nephilim. Hmm. And they're trying their best to come up with that. They want to replicate this. Hmm. That is why they are going so, you know, the, the bottom line is they want to resurrect Nimrod. Wow. In Revelation 17, you will see that connection. Because he was the poster boy, right? Yes. He yes. was the Nephilims were were not a match for Nimrod intellectually. Nimrod had more um, upstairs going on than the Nephilim. Although they were huge, tall, 400 footers, Nimrod became one. He wasn't hmm. one, he became. So he had some knowledge that he gained. And this is what's going to happen now. But they will never be able to bring that Nephilim race back as, as it was in the days of Noah, because the father says, for the elect's sake, I am going to shorten the time. Mm -hmm. so we have a small window of opportunity mm -hmm. for us as believers and for our loved ones to be prepared mm -hmm. to see the most dastardly, diabolical, immoral, brutal, um, unleashing of forces against the human race mm. that we have never seen before wow wow so this coronavirus is like a drop in the bucket this is just this is, testing the waters yeah it really it's really not um a big deal yeah exactly and so brother i love that you were saying that we have this up window of opportunity right yes and if i can if i can just I guess, tie in just to remind us of what do we do in this small window of opportunity, right? So, brother, do you remember in Ezekiel, because I, I can't find it right now, but remember how um, there, Yahuwah uh, instructed uh, for the messengers to put a mark in the forehead of certain people that he kept yes, safe? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. So, um, in, in Hebrew and Greek, I, I have the forehead, right? Basically, oh. it basically means clarity, conspicuous, yeah. 2020 or clarity of vision. So, and what, what year are you in? So I guess what I, I just want to say this to end, because yeah. we are, like you said, we are um, approaching times that we like I said, it's 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 like taking us, we're fishes and we're being removed from the environment that fishes are supposed to be living in. This is the kind, we're not meant to live in this 5G activated world, right? Exactly. So the question is, how, how do we survive in the meantime? Or how do we, so we talked about it, wait on Yahuwah, right? Find um, the opportunity to remember him. But really, 
Now do we understand what the John says when he says, I, I baptize you with water, but Yahusha will baptize you with fire and spirit, yeah. right? So yeah. what that means, if there is a fire coming common to all of the earth and the purpose is to purify and cleanse, guess what? When we vibrate literally to a frequency where it is, because Yahusha is the quickening, right? So we yeah. are slowed down light, but Yahusha quickens us. And so that makes us really equivalent to fire, or in other words, the light of the world, just like Yahusha is the light of the world. So in other words, Yahusha, for us to be able to not get um, consumed in fire, then we have to be made up of fire. Does that make kind of sense? Right? So how do we do that is in fire, fire, fire. Back, right? We, Yahuwah wants us to oscillate, to vibrate in the highest frequency. And Paul tells us how to think. You see that? And mm. we are to put on the new man. We are not wow. to give fear, doubt, unbelief. We have to have the power, love, and sound mind. And Yahuwah yeah. willing, we have to... Uh, the, the not, the, we have to bear the fruit of the Ruach, really. We have to do that. And Yahuwah willing, next time, there is this revelation that Yahuwah has given me as to the Beatitudes and how that's connected to the nine gift of the Ruach. And that's how connected yeah. to the tabernacle and how we are yeah. to enter into the holy place. And the, yeah. in Revelation, that is where safety is. So yeah. we're willing next time, this is how we take it, where we take it. But in the meantime, you know, you know, we have been talking about this. You know, if you haven't been paying attention, go back to the YouTube uploads and you have to bear with, you know, because I do take my time. I don't just give you the, you know, because I don't give you the punchline right away. You have to bear with it. Yeah. You have to really have, you know, conspicuously have a clarity of mind when you're listening to these encouragement that we have been discussing over the past how many months because i think yeah. brother this is timely don't you think brother and sisters and dad yeah, I, and right on. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, and you know susan the the preparation we need right now as i have been i think i have said it openly but more than i i, I want to re-emphasize every if not more than twice but every morning and every night before you go to sleep you mm -hmm. must learn to memorize psalm 91. oh memorize it and awesome. say it and mean it and, have, and that's the only way you're gonna survive what's coming wow brother memorize. if i can just share some a, a to your what you just said there my mom, admittedly, she's had uh, trouble with remembering things. But mom is super excited this week when we came here for lunch one time. And she said to my girls, what did you say, mom? Come on, mom. <laughs> you, mom, come on, go ahead and tell your testimony. Just to say it. What, what have you been doing, first of all? Okay. <laughs> well, Memorizing. like I've asked, the, the, you know, the, 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 the two girls how many psalms have they memorized and they said just one which is psalm 91 right and that's where i started memorizing that so i've memorized though that that's that uh, psalm psalm 91. and i uh, just you know every night and every morning and night that's what i do i just memorize the verse yeah, a lot of psalms so i've so far i've memorized uh four <laughs> i'm <Okay>. good <laughs> you know, i'll give you a secret if you try to um, learn it in the 1611 King James version, yeah, it, it seems to be in a in a in a form of a poetry like a rhyme. Mm. It, the words are easily stuck in your head. Mm -hmm. The modern, yes, the modern translations, mm. the words are changed and it doesn't flow in a rhyme form. Yeah, but listen, yeah. now I know it by heart from the King James. Pay attention to how the words sound. Uh -huh. And I have deliberately told my wife and everybody who listens to me, when you do Psalm 91, always do it in the first person. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Peter dwelleth, yeah. I say, I, 
I who dwell in the secret place of the Most High will abide under mm -hmm. the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. I will see of Yahuwah. Yeah. He is my refuge and my fortress. Right. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snares yeah. of the fall uh -huh. and the noises. He will cover me with His feathers, and under His wing I will trust. See? Yeah. And yeah. that's what you got. Mm -hmm. And when you do it like that, every pore in your hands are going to rise up. And you could feel the ruach. Yeah. coming into your system yeah. as you do it but please. Please, please try to memorize it from the king james because in the king james it's like poetic form it rhymes almost mm -hmm. excellent mm -hmm. and brother if i can share you our, our secret as well to, to those listening um so again my mom remember you were saying you she has trouble remembering things yeah. right so um well first of all just to backtrack a little bit yeah, you know how Yahuwah goes before us? For some reason, Yahuwah impressed upon my heart to get my children to memorize Psalm 91. And this is even before, uh, like maybe a year ago, brother. But anyways, now going yeah. now. Um, my mom has had trouble memorizing things in the past. But you know, this Shabbat, we opened up our Shabbat with my mom um, reciting <laughs> Psalm 91. And you know what? She took her time. We let her and she said it all from memory. And one of the things that we encouraged, I encourage her to do, because I found it so effective, brother, is in the morning when we're doing our time of introspection, secret place, meditation, let's call it time in Yahuwah. One of the things that I started doing more is to deep breathe. Whoa. So deep breathing, or diaphragmatic breathing, and we talked about this in a couple of, you know, a while ago, when we are breathing from our diaphragm, using the muscles of a diaphragm and breathing it out as well, I find that you take portions of the scripture and you breathe it in, you literally take it, you peek at the scripture, you whatever you're trying to memorize, and then you do a deep breathe. And just say it over and over again and then release it. And by releasing it, it's like it's almost like you are literally unzipping yourselves in your body and your spirit and your soul and injecting the word of Yahuwah inside you. And what you find is you memorize it a lot better. And all you're doing is using the diaphragm. You remember the breath, Yahuwah, um, putting his breathing upon our nostrils, the breath of life. So literally. And so I encouraged my mom to do it like that, to to deep breathe in the morning while she's doing her her meditation with the word. And has that worked, mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is that how you do it? And not only that, because like even everywhere I go, like walking, and then I even in the middle of the night when I wake up, it just goes in my mind right away. You know, something like it's been Repetition. all my thoughts. It's just there. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So repetition oh. and immersion in the word is what I'm hearing. Praise Yahuwah. Yes. Wow. Uh, that is, when you get Psalm 91 memorized and you get it down, we, I will walk you guys through some other ones, but Psalm 91 mm -hmm. is a must. Yeah. So for now, leave it there because that is your shelter. That's your protection. That's your, your that this is, this is like, what the what 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 the master says? Without me, you can do nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. You can do nothing without me. Mm -hmm. Abide in me. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, uh, ask what you will and it shall be done. Absolutely. But without me, you can do nothing. I'm quoting John fifteen, and uh, five, six, and seven. There, you know it. So we have to see that, mm -hmm. and I want. Uh, well, uh, that's what I want you guys to uh, memorize. Mm -hmm. John, in the first seven verses there, and we'll go step by step after that. But for the mm -hmm. next this week, try to memorize John 15, the first seven verses. Mm -hmm. And that he's making some promises there mm -hmm. that that promise he made that he will send the Ruach. In, in John 15, he's given you. The, the, the definition of what it means to have the Ruach. Mm. And he's going to define details and explain it to you. Mm -hmm. And he goes to, to say that 
I am the branch, you are the branches. And I'm going to paraphrase what he means. I am the branch, you are the branches. Don't think you could do anything without me. You cannot, you cannot do it without me. So let's get that over with and understand that only in me you have protection. Only in, when, in me you can do it. Mm, That's what he's saying, John 15. But we need to see it. You have to see between the lines what he's saying. Hmm. And, and also, just one more thing, you know, the scripture says the Torah is for the conversion of our soul. So what yes. Brother Shem is um, encouraging us all to do is to immerse and to memorize the word because our soul needs it. Our soul yes. needs to remember, to be reminded of what our spirit already knows. So this mm. is for our own. This is when we memorize the scripture, when we know it well and we hide it in our heart, this is what's going to come up. The very first thing in your mind and heart, like, like mom says, as you're walking, as you're doing whatever, it's there. So when, when something comes before us that is supposed to be scary, then this is the first thing that comes to mind. And that's what's going to give you the strength. Right, brother? Mm -hmm. Sisters? Yeah. yeah, it's true. I, I just want to give a little testimony about this. Crazy. You know, when, I, when I'm reading the scripture and uh, repeat it, the first thing in the morning this is what it comes to mind mm. well i went to netflix to watch a movie and i picked up a movie um jewish movie about the haredi life and stuff it's on you know every night you can watch one in the beginning was okay you know interesting how their life is but then it starts you know kind of sexual uh if she left the marriage and went to Germany and they were after her and they were in the morning when I woke up this is what came to mind wow mm -hmm. subconscious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yeah mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. well anyways I, we are I just want to again reiterate we are in a we are in, entering a time as has never before seen on this planet and we need mm -hmm. to more and more hide ourselves in thee. You know that song, let me hide myself in thee. Yes. Oh, in Clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. We have to do this literally. Mm -hmm. You know, literally. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah. Uh, yeah. Brother Shem, will you close us in prayer? Yes, uh, sure. Thank you. Avinu Malkinu, our Father, our King, in the name of Yahusha, our Redeemer and Savior, our Deliverer, our soon coming King. Mm -hmm. Oh, come quickly, Mashiach. We miss you. We love you. And we know you have a schedule. And we know you, are, you, do, you do things by a timetable, as our Father has instructed. So, but we are so longing for the relief that when we know what's coming, we know that there's only one place there's shelter that's mm -hmm. under the shadow of your wings. Let mm -hmm. us hide ourselves in the oh, rock of ages. As we listen to our, my daughter Susan bring forth with such clarity, the scientific way and matching it up with the spiritual and trying to explain mm -hmm. to us the significance of our being as how we exist and mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the composition of our body, how it relates to what's going on and how mm -hmm. you so supernaturally protect us, Father. Hallelujah. From the enemy and all this stuff and which the enemy is trying to bring people to break it down so then they could destroy us. But we know as we hide under the shadow of your wings, nothing mm -hmm. could come. We know that your words say a thousand will fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand. But they will not come near us. Only with our eyes we will look and see the reward of the wicked because we have made you our refuge, even the most high, our habitation. Mm -hmm. There shall no evil befall us. So we thank you, Father, for all these great words of assurance. We thank you for Susan again for all the time she put in into all the preparation. And thank you for all the support she's getting from her family so she mm -hmm. can 
actually bring and, and arrange and present such a wonderful mm. way that she's doing this this teaching. Mm. I pray that for continued anointing to be upon her and give her boldness to speak what you tell her. I Not mean, to that, um, oh, maybe somebody and now. If you mm -hmm. give her a revelation, Father, and she is convinced of it, give her the bonus to speak. Thank you. Because this is another way the enemy tries to muffle the bodies by yes. telling us that you're not supposed or we shouldn't. No, you give us mouth to speak your word. And when we have it, we must speak it with confidence. Oh, yeah. So I'm praying for Susan to get this confidence in you that she knows when she heard from you, it's you. And if you say speak, she speaks. Oh, wow. not muffle the words or not swallow the words. You give us seeds not to eat but to sow. Wow. Help this to resonate in, in the ears of everybody who's hearing. You give us seed to sow, not yeah. to eat them. So we have to sow them. So help us. Help every one of us that are hearing tonight, especially Susan, as a good presenter. Family, I pray for Rich. You know, he's not at home right now, and I miss him a lot. And we don't talk as much. I pray for mm -hmm. him. I pray for safety. Mm -hmm. and I pray we'll be able to see each other in, the, in this week coming up for Pesach. Mm -hmm. I pray for the preparation that we are making for Pesach, Father. Mm -hmm. It's it's looking good on uh, on the trial that we have had, but it's going to be a lot more than just five people as we did last week, six mm -hmm. people last week. Mm -hmm. So help us to work on that, Father, so we could get everybody on the same page. Mm. Because we would be having another one of these before Pesach. Mm. So, so pray that everybody will be able to join Monday evening uh, mm. for Zoom webinar for Pesach. And Father, help us. As we observe these things, let us not do it as a ritual or something that we do just because. Mm. We, must, we must remember that is a purpose why you order us, you command us to do these things. Mm. Help us why that command is in, the, in your word. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Father, that you have given us a mind to hear your word and to observe it and to do it. Thank mm -hmm. you for all the blessings. We pray for all our children. We pray for their protection, their guidance, and all our loved ones. We pray for the Basora, the gospel, to be mm -hmm. shared and they could hear and accept and come and join our mission. Lord, thank, you, Father. We thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory in the name of our beloved Mashiach, Yahusha, the Mashiach from Nazareth. Amen, amen, amen.